Hello everyone. Welcome to this amazing video on my YouTube channel. So in this video, I'm going to speak on uh, how the drawing reading for a flat slab has to be understood. So first we'll try to understand what exactly is a flat slab. So we might, you might have seen the normal construction, right? That is in the normal construction, we'll put up a column, then we'll have a beam and then the normal slab is going to come. So in the flat slab, what will happen is your columns are definitely going to be there. But instead of beam, I mean, there won't be any beams. Instead of that, what we give is we give a kind of a drop panel. So this is a drop panel. And over that, we are going to put up a slab. So it's called as a flat slab system. So usually, if you're constructing a, a commercial building, and if you want a good clear height between your floor to floor height, so usually what people do, if you go to the mall construction and all, people usually go with a flat, uh, flat slab type of construction. So first, we'll try to understand the drawing for this particular thing. So this is one of a commercial building. So right now we are seeing the basement floor plan, right? So when I say basement floor plan, this particular area or this particular floor will be utilized for the parking purpose. So it will be something like this, like uh, you have a ramp from here, right? So you have a ramp from here, you can take the ramp, it will go down, so it's written up. That means it, in this portion is down, this is at the top, right? So it'll go down and you can see all the car parking done here, right? So this way uh, you have to calculate also like how many car parking can be done. So that is why the numbering is done. Like it has come up to 32 here. So 32 car parking can be done. No, 32. And then we have one more here. 33 is done, right? Yeah. Apart from that, you're, from here, you have a staircase also, right? Uh, you have a staircase from here. And if you come forward here, you have a lift also. And then what they have done is they have kept one maintenance room here. And there's one generator area. And there's one electrical room here. And wherever the column is required, so you can see the green color, right? All these are the columns what we have put up. And then there is one more lift here, right? And then this is another ramp which will go out. I mean, it's one and the same. Either you can bring your vehicle from here and get down, or you can bring your vehicle from here and get down. So two ramps have been created here. Then there is a lobby here. And from the here, they have created one more, one more staircase here. So this is a plan of your basement floor, which is almost a 12,000 square feet area. After the uh, this thing, basement floor, the next one will go to the ground floor plan. The ground floor is again almost 12,000 square feet. So in the ground floor, what will happen is this is how you enter into that particular building. So since it's a basement, you'll be going down. Now this is at your road level. I mean, from the road level at a certain height, this uh, particular floor will be there. So it's written up here. So maybe you have to take uh, four to five steps. Okay. And then you are going to take up this particular floor. So it's a ground floor. Then this will be the main entrance to that particular plot. You have a security uh, cabin area here. And then uh, for the parking, you can do your two-wheeler parking in this area. And even a car parking can be, can be done from this area also. Got it? Yeah, you have one entrance from here. Then you have another entrance from here. So here, what they have done is, this is a showroom what they have planned. So this entire whatever you can see here, right? So it's a showroom, which is almost 9,500 square feet. And this is also another, uh, this is also the same showroom only. It's a carpet area. And this is super built up area, what they have mentioned here. Then again, from here, you have a door. Then here you can take the staircase and from here you have another two lifts from this side. Then another one lift here, another one lift here. Got it, right? Yeah. After that. So once your ground floor is done, next we'll go to the first floor. This is your first floor plan. It's almost a 14,000 square feet. So previously it was how much? It was uh, 12,000. Another 2,000 square feet has been increased here. It has come to 14,000 square feet. So here what they have done is again, same thing. See, staircase, the stair, staircase, the lift and all will never change. That location will be constant throughout the height of the building, right? So here they have converted that particular space into a shop. You can see here, right? They have written shop number three. Then we have shop number four here, shop number two, shop number one, shop number five. So this is a commercial building, right? So they have made this into a shop now. After that, so once we reach to the first floor plan, next we have a second floor plan. So again, in second floor also, there are a lot of shops, but they have broken down into small area. Like here, you can you see here, the carpet area is almost 1,200, 1,100 square feet, 1,000 square feet. This is almost a 2,000 square feet. So this is also 2,000 square feet. But in the next floor, that is the second floor, what they have done, same area. If you see the built up area, it's almost same, 14,000. But they have broken down, they have broken down the area into small parts. If you see here, you see here, shop number six, this is the carpet area is hardly 350 square feet. Then shop number five, shop number four, shop number three. So this way, this entire particular plan is done. Again, your staircase, lift, all these things will remain in the same uh, position. They will never change. Then since it's a commercial building and all, you require toilet, right? So that is why if you come here, 
from here to the lobby, if you come from here, you have this uh, toilet block. We have one, two, three toilets given here. Then, then you have another toilets, one, two, three toilets given here. Got it? Yeah. Then after that, after that, we'll come to the build uh, this thing. What is that? Uh, third floor plan. Again, same thing. Even more shops you can see here. But what they have done is here you were having two shops, right? So instead of two shops, that has been merged into one and they've converted this into office now. See office, 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 office. So this way they have planned it. So here, if you want to put up any shops, shops can come here in the second floor. Third floor, third floor is uh, completely for the offices and all. And finally, your terrace portion is going to come. This is your terrace portion. Terrace portion, usually nothing will happen. I mean, nothing will be there. Your lift machine room and then uh, uh, whatever maintenance room and other rooms are there. Those things will be there. And of course, the lift and all will and staircase will go to that particular portion. And this is the elevation of your building, right? So you, from the elevation, you'll get to know uh, like what is a floor to floor height and all. You will never get to know floor to floor height from the plan. So floor to floor height, you will get to know from the elevation part. So your this thing from the your basement floor is at a height of 10 feet, 6 inch. This is your basement floor. Then from the basement floor to the ground floor, I mean, this is a ground floor. Ground floor is your 11 feet height. Then first floor is 11 feet. Then second floor is 12 feet. Third floor is 12 feet. Then of course, there is a terrace. This is a terrace warfare. And over that, we are keeping a water tank, this particular thing. So it will come this way. So a kind of a truss is created here. Okay. And then you have a compound wall. So this was the entire plan of this. So in the next video, next video, I'll try to explain you the foundation part, how the foundation is put up and all. So before that, we'll try to understand these certain points here. So these are the things which you should know whenever you are understanding the structural drawing or whenever you are doing any execution, this note should be understood by you. The first, what is written, building is designed for the basement, the ground and a four floors only. So it's a basement plus G plus four story building. Depth of the excavation is five feet, six inch below the basement level. That is whatever excavation they have done. No. It has gone up to five feet, six inch below the basement level. Okay. Next, the SBC of the soil, what they have got is 26.84 tons per square meter. So that comes out to be almost 268 kilonewton per square meter. Now they are going to mention you what is a clear cover that you're supposed to use in the footing. In the footing, you're supposed to use 50 mm. So in terms of inches, it is two inches. In the column, you're supposed to use a clear cover of 40 mm usually. They mentioned one inch, which is 25 mm. But usually in the column, we provide 40 mm. But yeah, uh, sometimes few people go with one inch and all. But if you refer the IS456 code book, it says 40 mm is your clear cover for the column reinforcement. Apart from that, they have given you the grade of concrete to be used, which is M25. Then they also have mentioned you what is the lap length that you're supposed to use. For the column, your lap length is 45 times the diameter of the bar. And for the footing reinforcement, they are given 60 times the diameter of the bar. And the column links, that is the lateral ties in the column, you're supposed to use 10 diameter at eight inches center to center spacing. But this can be referred to your structural drawing. If you see here, we have a structural drawing here. In the next video, we'll try to understand all these things. You have a level one, level two. These are your lateral ties, what is mentioned. Those things we'll try to concentrate in the later part. Yeah. Then grade of the steel is FE500 we are supposed to use. So these are the general notes which we need to understand so that we get to know what is the grade of the concrete, what is the grade of a steel, what are the cover blocks we are supposed to maintain and those things. So SBC, we don't require, I mean, being a structural engineer, uh, you require this so that you can say to what depth your foundation will go. But for the site execution engineer, this is not actually required, right? That's it. So this was all about the plan of this particular building. So in the next video, we'll try to see how the footing layout is uh, to be understood. We have this entire compound wall here. That is a retaining wall is given. And then we'll try to understand how these footings are arranged. And once this, we understand this, then we'll try to understand the retaining wall details. That is the reinforcement details. Then we'll try to understand the footing plan section. We'll try to understand how the reinforcement is given. So this way we'll try to understand. Then we'll come to the most interesting part that is your slab, re slab reinforcement. Since it's a flat slab, no, your reinforcement will not be like a general reinforcement. Like it's not like a crank bar and all. So here uh, you have to, even the thickness is also more here. So those things we'll try to see in the later lecture. So please uh, like to this particular video. And in the upcoming videos, we'll uh, try to cover this entire particular plan and we'll try to understand. So if you like my video, please don't subscribe to the channel. There are other videos in my channel. Go through the other videos. And then if you feel you're, if you're, you're able to get good knowledge from the channel, you subscribe to the channel. So, uh, I'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.